Move forward. Uh, Daryl Issa is good enough to join us now from California. The good congressman uh, was, uh, was, did you hear what I said on TV about you? Is that the reason you called us? <laughs> no, I'm afraid I didn't. Somebody else might have. I've, <laughs> I've been busy voting no. We're not the party of no, but that's usually how we end up voting on a lot of this uh, spending here in Washington. Well, listen, nonetheless, uh, I always uh, appreciate the opportunity to have a conversation with you. Uh, now, I, I saw your tweet a little while ago, and you basically seem to be saying, uh, in fact, I'll read it here. Let's show it, Robert. Here's what Daryl Issa just uh, tweeted a little while ago. He tweets a lot, this guy. Federal government is not doing its job on immigration. Do you stand with Arizona? I do. Uh, okay, you're right. Now, let's start the conversation there. So, the federal government isn't doing its job on immigration, so Arizona tries to do its job uh, on immigration. It gets slapped down today by a federal court judge. So now it goes back to the Obama administration, and you say, and most Americans say, come on, federal government, come up with some kind of comprehensive immigration reform so we can get this damn thing fixed once and for all in this country. So they will try to do that. But as soon as there's an inkling in that comprehensive legislation that any people who are in the United States illegally might have an opportunity to stay a path to citizenship, quote unquote, as it's often been called, then Dan Stein at FAIR and a lot of people on right-wing talk radio shows will scream amnesty, everything will fall apart, and just like it happened under a Republican administration, this thing won't happen again. Are you concerned about that? Rick, I'm concerned about one thing, and, and, and one thing only, and that is that the path from illegal to legal, if if people insist that they're only here for jobs, they mm -hmm. weren't trying to circumvent our immigration laws, they weren't trying to come here to be others waited in line for decades to get that opportunity, if that's the case, the pathway from illegal to legal is the opportunity for a guest worker program, It's not an opportunity to be a citizen. So amnesty is an issue only because if, if as many Republicans and, and, more, and almost all Democrats say, well, we want them to go to the end of the line. Mm -hmm. Rick, the end of the line doesn't actually get you in this country in our lifetime. <laughs> the end of the line for most of the five billion people that come here is they don't get here. So right. if, if you go from being illegal to being a guest worker, you're already getting a tremendous benefit. And Republicans yeah. are willing to convert real workers to guest workers without dealing with their past indiscretions as long as it was only being in this country out of status, what we're not willing to do is to put them ahead of countless, not billions, millions, but billions of people who want to come here and cannot come here if they play by the rules. They simply never come to the top of the list. Well, well just let me ask you this before I bring Dan Stein into this, because this is a really important conversation, and I'm so glad we're having it, and every American should be listening to this. Is that guest worker suggestion that you make something that that person because look, let's face it, there's people who've been in this country 20, 30 years. Their kids have gone to school, played football, don't speak Spanish. Um, they've paid all their taxes. They've done everything they've never do. They've never broken a crime. Does that person who you now say should be at least allowed to be a guest worker in this country eventually have the right to turn that guest worker process into a legal resident process? Would you agree with that or would you still say, no, absolutely not? that would be amnesty. I would set the term as follows. Everyone who comes here on a legal guest worker program, such people as H-1Bs, people who come here as highly skilled labor, they are not prohibited from making other applications for residency that's permanent. I would not discriminate against four or five million guest workers and prohibit them from applying for other immigration statuses. I think that's only fair. They should be able to apply for the lottery. Mm -hmm. They should be able to apply for family unification, whatever it is. But they should not go ahead of anyone else. If that pathway to citizenship is start playing by the rules that have existed for everyone else, and if you happen to get to the front of the line through those other processes, great. There won't be a single Republican objecting to that because Republicans have stood and supported one million people coming through the front door every year for the whole 10 years that I've been in Congress. And that includes John Shattuck and others mm -hmm. of Arizona. So I, I think people sometimes represent Republicans as not supporting immigration. I haven't heard a peep about a million legal work workers a year 
for my colleagues for the 10 years I've been here. But what we're talking about are the 12 million or so who are already here, who in many cases have been, or let me put it this way, you could argue have in many ways benefited the system, have paid their taxes, have assimilated, do have children, have learned to speak English, haven't broken any other crime except the fact what was long a misdemeanor, and that is entering the country illegally. What do you do about Rick, them? Rick, you, you've what just made, you... you've made the most wonderful for Republicans and Democrats. If those conditions all agree, why wouldn't they be able to apply and be considered? Fine. Remember, you said they didn't break any other laws. Right. You, you just said they speak English. You just said they've been working and paying taxes. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go the other way. They don't speak English. They don't have tangible skills. They can't prove they worked and paid taxes. In fact, they were working in a cash economy. Okay. Uh, and they've got uh, three convictions for uh, uh, misdemeanors and or uh, class three felonies. What do we do with those people? Kick their asses out. Exactly. The rule of law first starts with saying, okay, we have a certain amount of guest workers we meet, need. Let's have a legitimate, decent way for those people to come through the front door. And if, if putting the people who already are desirable to their employers and their employers say, I'll employ this person who I know about for perhaps the reason that they've already worked for me, great, no problem. We can have a program of one, two, three million. We can have a program where family that's already here and being supported can continue to stay with that guest worker and... We can have them able to apply for other programs, mm -hmm. and over time, many, maybe not all, but many of them would get the opportunity if they wanted to, to become permanent residents and okay. citizens. Okay. There's no problem with it, but all those exceptions of if they're already this, this, and this, you just said it perfectly. If they're not those things, then they should be behind those who are willing to meet all those requirements, and that's what comprehensive guest workers should be about and what immigration reformers should be about is how do we get the best people into the system and eliminate the back door that has allowed, to be honest, many of those people to be abused, including some of them dying in the Arizona and California desert. No, you're We've right. We've got to end that part of the system. That's where Republicans <laughs> and Democrats will come together. Like I say, we, we move past the ar amnesty argument pretty quickly when we, when we say, look, we don't have a problem with people having an opportunity to apply for immigration processes that are created. But, you know, if I'm here and I'm a guest worker, and let's say I'm a legitimate guest worker already, I should be ahead for the application for that of the guy that comes in tomorrow that was an illegal wants to become an, an Ill, a legal. Yep. And, and so, you know, all the legal immigrants, and in your audience, you're, you've got a countless amount of people who are legally here but not eligible for citizenship. They certainly want to remain ahead of all those other people. And that's part of the process of rule of law. We can take this from broken to fix. We can use Arizona as a wake-up call that we've got to fix the problem. And if President Obama will come part of the way, I guarantee you, people like myself will come the rest of the way. Wow. I'll tell you, you're making news right here on Rick's List. Daryl Issa fired up and uh, really, look, breaking ground here. I mean, we're talking about getting over this hurdle that nobody in this country in the last at least the last decade has been able to overcome, getting over that hurdle that usually starts with the word amnesty. My thanks to you, sir, uh, for joining us and, and taking us through what appears, I think, to most Americans listening to you like, you know, a reasonable approach.